The Ride to Orbis podcast's main driving force is its community. If you would like to learn how to support the show, you can visit patreon.com slash forward ride to Orbis. Alrighty then, and I'm going to hit alt on this, so it's just the video source. I see why you hate doing this every stream. Yeah, dude. I mean, welcome to my world. Yep. This is how I live every day. Doing there boxes, it's, uh, it's pretty annoying. Alrighty. Here we are, a special. I guess I said that last time. If I use the word special too many times on a podcast, it's not really a special podcast, but I'll say this one. Also a special Right to Orbis. Um, yeah, so uh, this is episode seven, Right to Orbis, a gaming podcast. We are back. My name is Max Spicer. I am one third of the host of this podcast. The other third is currently... MIA, not MIA, we know where he's at. He's safe and sound. He will return eventually, aka Pringle the One. Pringle the Two is here currently. Pringle the Two is here. You are known by many names. Pringle the Two, the the main reserve. Trying to think of who was really good off the bench. But anyway, Mr. Brokenwing himself. (laughs) Maybe I'm a lion. What's up, Brokenwing? That's a... That's a good extra title I never had. Best off the bench. Yeah, I'm trying to think who was really good off the bench as like a sixth man. And man, I cannot think of it. But I've been so far removed from basketball that I, uh, I'm i thinking like old school Pistons, Vinnie Johnson. Like that's who, I don't know why that's coming to my, my brain. There, I'm sure there's many better six man. I mean, Ben Gordon back with the Bulls. Anyway, that's we're not a sports podcast. We are a please, gaming. <laughs> no, please let's not be a sports podcast unless you want to do this funny podcast where you are all the sports guy and you're trying to explain sports to me. Oh man. That might work. Dude. That might work, honestly. I would love to have like a segment. You know how we have at least we should start. We have not, but we we're gonna start the word of the day segment. I wanna yes. start a uh, a segment talking about a a nuance uh play or strategy in, in a certain sport and try to explain it to both you and Pringle. Cause I don't think neither of you are really sports fans. So I would love to talk about like football or basketball or something like that and just like that would, going that down. would actually work really well. I think there's a, <clears throat> I think there's a certain YouTuber named uh, Markiplier who has a, a, a podcast called go team sports mm. where all it is is Markiplier has no idea what sports are, but his friend, he knows everything about sports. So the whole podcast is, him being explained what sports are or how rules of sports are. So I think that would actually be a cool little segment. Yeah, I, I would love I mean, that's where my clip of can't do it uh, comes can't from. Can't do it. You know, Coach Singletary. I, I love that guy. He's sick. So, uh, yeah, that's where I get all my clips. And Fair I'll, I'll add that I in. Need, Episode 8, maybe. I need you to also add in the clip of... Uh, Today What's his name? Has been the real not- <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Still A. Smith. Want- yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need I need Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> yeah. I think that'll be Pringles uh Pringles clip. Today Let's has been a back. bad day. <laughs> yeah. But uh here we are. We're talking about sports when we're a gaming podcast, but uh it's all good cuz this is right to Orbis. It's an airship and you know, it takes us where the wind goes. Uh Broken, appreciate you joining me again on this lovely Hey, we're on time. Thursday night. No, no more of this Friday shenanigans. Thursday well, you night. Say that, you say we're on time, but as you know. Well, I meant like the day. We're not on time with the time that we usually record. By the way, I asked you to become pro streamer uh, yes. for the podcast. So I guess for everybody who has not been uh, clued in on this stuff. Uh, so when we record the podcast, we, are, we actually go live. We used to on my main YouTube channel, the Max Spicer channel. And we used to record and go live on Thursdays. But then I would do my post editing and do all the thumbnail and all the, you know, the stuff that the YouTubers do. And yeah, I used to put the podcast on Monday. But now I'm going to change the way I do my uh, recording slash stramming. So uh, Broken has taken 
pro streaming duties. By the way, I think I can hear an echo whenever I talk. So maybe, I don't know if that's on my end or your end, but I can sort of I have hear echo. Myself. I have echo cancellation off, but maybe hmm. that's hmm. that could be me. Anyway, um, anyway, thank you for being pro streamer for no worries the audience. No worries. Yeah. Um, we got some housekeeping, and honestly, for as late as we started, I think this will be a pretty short podcast because we really don't have too much to talk about because we're just getting into the the mix of things with all the betas and all everything that's coming up. So we're early on this stuff. Next week we'll probably three be betas for fighting games all yeah. this month. Yeah, next week I think we'll have plenty to talk about, but uh, this week is you know pretty light. That's why I thought we were going to do something else. But you know what? We will save it for a rainy day. As far as housekeeping, um, RTO versus CNC is happening this Saturday. Saturday. Now, by, yes. By the time people listen to this on Monday, it's already happened. So you can check the archive, see who won. What, what were the matches and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it, it'll be really cool. Right to Orbis is a podcast. Coffee and Combos is a podcast. This weekend. Check so, out both of them. Yeah, check out both of them. Um, I don't know who's going to do commentary with you, Broken. I asked the Coffee and Combos Discord, and they said they might be able to find the person just so you can have, like, it'd be cool to have a guy on the coffee and combo side talking about like, oh, this is whatever, you know, sodium rising. Well, he's actually not playing, but uh, this is Merck and he plays Lay or whatever. And you can say it's like, well, this is whoever. Zio. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> whatever. And, no, you know, Zio's and, not going to be in it. <laughs> no, no, he's not. And then uh, you can just, you know, talk about uh, both sides of, you know, who Lumiere is as well. He's playing. He plays Blaze Blue as well. So he'll be in. Um, so yeah, we we can have uh, you know one commentary from RTO, one commentary from CNC, should be good. So today I sent out all the confirmations, the final confirmations. It looks like we will make our eight to eight, eight versus eight quota. So yeah, yeah, should be fun. So yeah, if you're listening to this now on a Monday, uh, check out the archive because I'll that'll be streamed on the Max Spicer YouTube channel. Should be fun. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Um. Speaking of discords, we have one. You can join it on the YouTube's description and pin comment normally. Shout outs to Patreon. Shout outs to everybody, by the way, last week who pitched in on the mailbag episode. That was great. Um, they they came through. We had some interesting discourse about why we don't like Nintendo and how much we love rhythm games and uh, a bunch of fighting game stuff as well. So good stuff. Um, that's if all. If you think about it, if you think about it, fighting games are technically a rhythm game hey, in itself. Yeah, it's a dance between you and your opponent. Yeah, it's it's, it's a dance. It's a rhythm game, but in multiplayer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's a dance with the AI, and they cheat. They step on your toes. <laughs> they read your inputs, and they're they like, do. "Oh, he's gonna do a DP. What a wonderful I time." Man. Yeah, so uh, that'll be um, that'll be coming up again once we get more mail, which we already actually have gotten some more questions and topics. I'm just going to wait on them to talk on the next mailbag episode. Hopefully Pringle will join us on that one. Yep. Um, things to note before we're here. Speaking of Pringle, Pringle is not here. Well, he is in spirit, but he's not here physically. And... Even though he's not here, he that fool listened to every single episode we've recorded up to this point, which is hilarious. Plus the TMP I did with pants, so he's all caught up. So he he knows what what had happened, and uh, <laughs> that, that fool is uh, he's he's funny. I was like Pringle, how can you listen? Because we recorded six episodes of RTO, and I recorded that one TMP. So that's seven podcasts. I was like, how can you listen to seven podcasts? Like back to back, I can do like two maybe, and like I'm all right. Let, let me let me do something else. But he listened to all of them. So you see, honestly, with me, I think I I can understand why he did it because like when I'm playing a video game, I have to have something in the background. So like maybe that's why he's just like, oh, I'm playing games at home. Well, I might as well listen to a podcast. Oh, I'll just yeah. listen to the team. I'll just listen to the Ride to Orbis podcast. You know. Right, the Orbius, as you like to Orbius. call it. Orbius, <laughs> yes. By the way, he's still no or nickname. Orbin time. Orbin time. It's Orbin time. Um, 
Still no neck name. Honestly. So I think Degen Rangers we... is sticking, right? Yeah, I think the Degen Rangers is sticking with the what the fuck Rangers coming. <laughs> All right. God, I love that picture. That picture is amazing. It is pretty good. So yeah. Um shout outs to Prangle. And of course, your favorite segment, Broken Podcast Corrections. AKA shout outs to all the people hating on us. Yes. Uh, shout outs to Jam. He he likes to to really nitpick at what I say. But anyway, podcast corrections. So we technically soft banned One Piece last week during the podcast because these nerds kept uh, going on and on about the good old OP in the podcast discussion channel. Now, we talked about that last week. Broken, you mispronounced the word hockey saying hakai instead of ha ki. And uh, apparently, according to these guys in our Discord, your weep card is in danger of being revoked because that was a. Uh, oh. That was. <laughs> <laughs> My weep card is being revoked for One Piece? Oh. Your Dejin card is very much very much safe it's... with, with pokey feet still behind your walls. That's. Uh, it's good. Trust me. <laughs> oh, by the way, look, I have a I have a curtain now. Hey, so now very we could nice. be now we could be dark. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'll no longer see those uh police officers chasing hooligans outside your window. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would be pretty funny where I'd all of a sudden just see the, the cops just, you know, going ninety <laughs> outside the window. Um I don't know how many times that has happened. I'm just like, I got to yeah. pretend that everything's fine. Yeah. So, uh, but hey, I like, I like the curtain right next to the pokey feet. Uh, she's got some company. So that's good. Sure it does. It's, so as far as your mispronunciation, um, that was, that was pretty bad. So you'll, you know, you'll have to take that L, but you know what? You're not alone because um, I have joined you and taken the L's. Uh, I also had a moment when I called throwing stars, shooting stars. Back when we had our Samurais, Ninjas, and Pirates discussion on episode 5. So, you know, we got to correct our uh, podcast corrections by, you know, not misspeaking. Of we'll do better. We'll do better. Archipelago. I'm already doing better. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm, yes. wearing a, I'm wearing a special hat on this podcast. You are. I've noticed. It's yeah. a really special hat. It's yes. really good looking. Uh, it actually came out much better than I anticipated. So I bought, uh, so over my left shoulder, there are a couple of hats, and those are going to be sent out to yourself as well as Pringle the One. And um, yeah, I, I, every, I've i tried to do hats back when we did um, FGC Hollywood, and one came out okay. They're kind of expensive to make, but like the other two that I made were, man, terrible quality. So I ended up tossing them. These, I actually didn't spend that much money making these hats. Now, they're printed. They're not embroiled. So that's the only thing. I was like, you know, they're not very fancy. But the RTO logo is on there. So just for people listening to the podcast, um, the hat is just a white baseball cap with a sort of black and white version of the RTO logo. So, um, yeah, I'll send you guys those hats this weekend. Pringle was saying, hey, the post office doesn't open on the weekend. And I was like, what do you mean? Of course it's open on the weekend. That's the one thing the Midwest has going for it, is that this Midwest sucks, but at least we get the USPS on Saturday. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, you know, Midwest does suck. It's terrible. It's terrible. But yeah, I'll get these hats out shipped out uh, this Saturday, so you guys will have something to wear. Although it's it's winter now, so... Honestly, I'm still going to wear it every episode. I'm just going to have the hat on. There you go. Got to represent. Hat buddies. So, yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be coming out to you guys soon. Tm. I love I love how you say it's it's winter. I have yet to feel winter. I, I still guess it's have not winter yet, right? Yeah, it's it's fall it's, still. It's still 90 degrees outside. That's true. Like, why? Why is it that way? We've had it cold in the mornings and then it gets hot as throughout the day. That's that's how it is. It's cold in the morning. It's cold at night. In the afternoon, it's blaringly hot. That sun. That sun. I drive east to work every day, so that sun is straight in my eye. As I'm driving, and I'm just looking at the sun, hating my day. That's that's how it is for me at work. So uh, I don't have a uh, at my parking lot doesn't have one of those nice little shade things. Mm -hmm. So 
I go into my car, it's burning hot in there. And then when I go to work, because it's there's no shade in at the work parking lot, I just go even at, at night where it's like it's nice and cool. I'll go into my car and it's still warm. Brutal. I'll have to like it is it's brutal. Good old Tessas. Um, what's going on? What are we playing? I got well, a couple, I got a couple uh, things going on, but broken. Please tell me. Your mic. What am I playing? It's new. Which, by the way, I think your mic might be the source of our echo, but we might change that during break. We'll see what happens. But talk to me about sure. your mic. Why'd you get a new mic? So I got a new mic because I've been noticing from a few of my friends that my mic was sounding bad. So they were like, hey, your mic sounds bad. Your mic sounds bad. And I was like, okay, okay. They bullied yeah, you into buying a new mic. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's what my brother's my brother's friends did. They bullied him into getting me to buy him a new mic. So Damn. bullying works. It does work. <laughs> Bring it back in schools. <laughs> OK, let's okay. let's hold let's on. Down. There's let's certain down. certain bullying works. Let's let's calm down. Certain. Yeah. <laughs> Had the preface certain. Mm -hmm. Now it's all cyberbullying. It's not really like. Although, if you really want to bully, you should bully uh, corporations. They're not your friends. No. Yeah, you should. You should bully corporations, and you should steal Always from bully. Walmart. No, I'm kidding. They'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> do they not have do cameras. That. <laughs> they have cameras. Hey, speaking of Walmart, I got a quick story here. I had to go to court yesterday. By the way, I've had a rough week, my friend. Like it's been. It's been I, N N G B A D. I, like it's not been good. <laughs> I've been I've been on I've been on Discord. I've noticed you just been having a bad week. It's been rough. Uh, work has been rough. Hopefully it gets better. But I had to go to court yesterday. But the truck broke down at work, and I was stranded on the side of the highway until the the tow driver showed up, and it was rush hour in downtown St. Louis, and I was like, oh my god, this is terrible. I had to go to court because I got a traffic ticket and the lovely uh, county of St. Louis does not allow you, apparently, to pay traffic tickets online. You have to appear at court. And I was like, well, whatever. I'm just going to pay this thing. So it starts at 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. And 6 p.m.? What yeah, the hell? Dude, that's when the court starts. So I was like, God damn. So anyway, I don't get to court until 630 because, you know, I got stranded on the highway Finally, after I, you know, dropped the truck off with the tow truck driver over at my uh, employer's place and then went to get my car and then drove to court. It was a whole thing. I show up at 630. The courtroom is packed. I'm talking hella people. And I, I guess they only have court during certain times. So it's like they have court dates. That's the same day for everybody. So I was like, oh, Jesus. So how it works. I don't know if you've ever been to court. How it works is that everybody's sitting in court. Think of Judge Judy, right? Everybody just sitting there. But instead of like you have two people talking to the judge, it's just a single podium in the middle of the courthouse and, oh, or the courtroom, Lord. rather. And then the judge is in front of you and he has his little secretary right next to him. And then he, the accountant who like does the billing and all that. So every single one has to go up to the podium and he calls you by name, depending on the order which you came in. So here's the thing. I showed up at 630. So I'm going to be the last person there because they already start registering at like five. So I, I'm just, you know, drying out there. And this is after a long days of work. And I have one count of speeding. So I was going, I mean, whatever. I was going 24 and a 15. It's not, it wasn't that big of a deal. But you can't speed in a 15 because that's, you know, whatever. It's it's bad. But 24, I was only going nine over. Anyway, so I had one count and I had to listen to every single person go in front of me. And you know how many people in that courtroom were there for shoplifting at Walmart, which, by the way, is <laughs> right next door to the courtroom? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> so... um. If anybody's interested, the sentence, not sentence, the fine for first offenders shoplifting at Walmart in St. Louis County is $125 and you're banned from Walmart. <laughs> so uh, that is the sense. So uh, play your cards um, smartly or what's, what's the saying? Play your cards. Uh, 
uh correctly correctly is that it? Uh, i don't know wisely yeah play know. your cards wisely. wisely there we go yeah uh, if you're gonna shoplift at walmart because that 125 dollars. now you know what a lot of people pled guilty and they just took the fine some of them were like not guilty and they're like okay do you want a lawyer or do you want to <laughs> do you want do you want a, a court date some people took a lawyer, so they get like a month extension, and some people took a court date, which they just show up and then defend themselves in court. So there was a hearing, which I don't know what I would like. Do you get your fine reduced or whatever? I've never been to court. I've only I've paid fines before, like parking tickets or whatever. So anyway, hella shoplifting. Uh, a couple people, no violent crimes. It was just all like little petty stuff, like you know, uh, parking tickets or uh, no proof of insurance, Mr. basically. I don't even think they're misdemeanors, really. I think uh, they're just little tiny stuff. Like, you know, you got pulled over by the cops for going over or you didn't have insurance or your car was tinted or whatever. But anyway, it was a whole just circus in there. And I didn't leave well, until like eight o'clock. So honestly, now you should uh, you should have you should have like said something whenever people got in accused for tinting. Be like, have you been outside? Have you been yeah. outside? Yeah, it makes sense that their windows are tinted. Yeah. So that was my that was my Wednesday night. Actually, my whole Wednesday day was uh terrible and the night was awful too. So that actually brings me up brings me to the second part. Um No River City Girls playthrough. Because yeah, I was I was way too late coming back. Uh River City Girls won our review discussion poll. We're supposed to play that on Wednesday. Yeah, I had a terrible Wednesday, so I missed that. So we'll play it next Wednesday. We'll start yep. start that, and then the review discussion will follow, hopefully, after we beat that game. But the two other games I've been playing are... By the way, can I, can I clap you up? For what? You finished it. Oh, are you talking about the swan? Yes. Finally. The unfinished mm -hmm. swan... Has been finished. Man, that wasn't... Uh, listen, I like Walking Sims because I like narrative-driven games. That one wasn't great. And I heard a lot of people say good things about this in, like, the the niche, boring genre that I like. The people like similar games like this. They're like, oh, this is really good. Like, this is a good Walking Sim narrative-driven game. It's okay. Like, it was all right. Like, it wasn't anything special. I didn't really like, particularly like the gameplay of of having to, like, throw water balloons of fucking everything. It was like, <laughs> it's annoying. And uh, the story wasn't all that good. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't good. But anyway, I beat it's, it. I beat it's it. Splatoon before Splatoon was Splatoon. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. There were, there were a couple uh, a couple spots in that game where I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is neat. Uh, some of the puzzles were cool, but overall, not the best walking sim I've played. And I've played a bunch of them. So definitely, if you want to play a good walking sim, if you want to laugh, Stanley Parable. If you want a good story, uh, Vanishing of Ethan Carter is not bad. Um, don't play uh, Everybody Gone to the Rapture because that one's kind of whack. But uh, The Beginner's Guide is really good. There's a bunch of really good ones. Uh, Gone Home. Anyway, Unfinished Swan. It's finished, but I wouldn't play it again. Death's Door. That's my stream game. I've been really enjoying that. Death's Door is sick. Uh, playing that on stream. Super fun. And then going to start Danganronpa V3 on my personal time. I can't stream that game because people will spoil the shit out of me. So, yep. I will say this though. I was thinking that it's uh, it's funny. I was thinking, you know, what would be funny is when he's, he he says "gone home." I say, "Not the <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right." Yeah. Um, Not the reason why Resident Evil exists. No, no. That is that would be Sweet Home from like 1982 or whatever year that came out. Yeah, don't uh, don't play. Don't confuse it. Yeah, don't don't confuse those two. What have you been playing? I've been playing Potion Permit. It's uh pretty fun. Um, you talked about last week. Yeah, I picked it up. Mm -hmm. and I just started playing it. I'm annoyed by a few things in the game. So for one, it's a uh, time based game. So every ten minutes is basically like a few seconds. Oh, real time. Yeah. Mm. And also sometimes like in order to build a relationship with somebody like rat, like a lot of people's relationships are easy. It's just, oh, OK, once you once you like unlock a certain like relationship meter, you go and you do an event. Right. And then that's mm. that's it. 
So that's easy. Some people, it's difficult as hell because what it is is, oh, hey, you got to go unlock an area, which means you got to collect a shit ton of ro rocks and wood and money. And then, oh, wait, like there's one chick. I forget what her name is. But Maria. No, it's not Maria. Oh, shit. <laughs> It's Hannah. There it is. Hey, Hannah. I was close. Come on. That's like a come on. That's a farming simulator white girl name. <laughs> Maria. Yeah, it's a Hispanic girl's name. And maybe, maybe it's simulator. universal because it's biblical. So maybe it's just a universal name, right? True. Anyways, so this chick named Hannah. So like there's three levels per like uh, per like I forget what it is. It's I don't know who you are. I know who you are. You're really good friends with me, right? Mm -hmm. Relationship builder. So, yeah. So to get to Hannah's like third final hit, you have to do this mission. Well, this mission requires you to get to the final area of the game. But I got to her like her requisite, like while I unlocked the second area of the game. Nice. So now I had to like. You've been talking it grind. up with Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> you would. I don't know. So Hannah's undateable. There's like Damn. certain characters that are dateable. They have four. And apparently in order to get that fourth one, you have to get this thing called like a... I don't know what it's called, but it's like a certain gift that I have no idea how to unlock and I'm not looking up a guide on how to do a it. A silver wolf's heart. <laughs> Good go, lord, Hannah. that'd be awesome. If no, Hannah Hannah's was kinda... a... If she, if she was a waifu, would she be the best waifu? Mm, no, not really. because. No. I mean, she's pretty, but like the reason why I wouldn't say she's the best waifu is because she's one of those women in the th this game has so many women that are like, my master is really cool, and I feel like I'm not good enough for oh, my master. That's and a then it's like terrible archetype. Oh man! And then you see your, the masters like there's two types of master. One of them is actually you're really good. You just seem to think that you're under my shadow when actually I'm under your shadow as well. Mm -hmm. Or the other master is like. I wish you just listen because I'm actually really good at giving advice, but you're just an asshole. Damn. I'm more of like, uh, honestly, the good waifu that I wish was dateable, but isn't dateable is the, uh, is the, uh, the, the blacksmith's daughter. Cause the Ooh. mom is, yeah, the blacksmith's mom is cool, but the blacksmith's daughter, I wish she was dateable. I'd have, I'd have put like her on the, on the spotlight, but whatever. We got the barmaid and the uh, mayor's daughter. Ah, man, those aren't, man. See, I like the spicy ones. I like them with a little spunk. Like, yeah, Oh, also, there's the pirate lady, but the pirate lady seems kind of weird. Hmm, bam. Rip. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Is there a dog? Do you have a dog? Yes, there is a dog. Okay. You, you cannot customize the dog, but you get a dog. Sweet. You have to feed it every day. And uh, the great thing about the dog is that uh, he will actually, like, if you're like, oh, God, I need to find somebody for a mission. He, he could literally just guide you to where that person is. Sick. So there's that. Man's best friend. Um, there is a fishing mini game that's actually pretty good. Oh, man. Pringle woke up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> fishing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's that. And then also, the only thing I actually really do not like is that whenever you crap, whenever like people are sick, you basically are, have zero access to them. Oh. Because, so like, they're bedridden, and then once you cure them, they're bedridden until the next day. Damn. And so what happens is that if you have a mission that requires you to talk to them, you have to wait until the next day to talk to them. Oh, man. Social distancing. <laughs> In game. Man. I will say another thing. I guess uh, one other tiny thing I hate is the fact that, like, a lot of missions will require you to get a certain item in the wild. And, like, some of these items are super rare. So, like, only one or two of them spawn per day. So that means you're going to have to spend multiple days just going out to grind to go get this item. Which yep. sucks. That's how they get but, you. That's how they get their uh, replayability, replayability stats. Oh, my God. Put that on podcast corrections next week. Uh, replayability stats is, uh, you know, you keep, uh, keep playing the game every day. They'll be like, hey, look at all our concurrent... Players every day we have three thousand players just for like a second while that item spawns <laughs> and then they go yeah do something else yeah but uh there's that I will say it just kind of sucks that like 
there is no like mini timer in the game that tells you, hey, you should probably go to bed. So like at two o'clock, if you don't go to bed in the morning, you mm-hmm. just pass out and then you wake up at 12. Damn. And afternoon. But if you go to bed any time before two o'clock, you wake up at six in the morning, which is before anybody wakes up, which is fine, because then that means you, you have like maybe a few minutes to go or a few. Yeah, an hour or two to go and, uh, you know, just chop down wood, get some rocks and go to go the fish. store. And sh- yeah, mm-hmm. go fish or shop. And then you can shop, you know, so you can do that. But. Oh, boy. <laughs> it definitely sounded when you described it last week, I was like, oh, this is a broken game. This is like not broken as in the game's broken, but this is like your type of game. So um, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I'm having a blast with it. Uh, Overwatch 2 is a game. By the way, is it just called? So I saw you on Discord and it says Broken Wing playing Overwatch. Is it just called Overwatch? Called Overwatch 2, but the icon is Overwatch. Is it the same client? Yes, it is the same client. So Overwatch 1 is free now? Overwatch 2 is free. There is no Overwatch 1. There is oh. no such thing as Overwatch 1. Is that Overwatch why everybody 2. was so sad? Well, one of the reasons why is because account merging deletes a lot of your... So what account merging does is that it says, hey, this is your account. This is also your account. We're merging them together. Mm. But a lot of the things was is that like some people had certain cosmetics on one that you cannot get on the other. And now all that progress, all that gameplay, all that stuff deleted. Damn. Also, another thing that people are upset about is the fact that it is almost impossible to get into the game because there's so many people that want to play the game. So every big game goes and goes to that stage. Remember, wasn't it like three weeks where people couldn't play GTA online? Like, yeah, (laughs) couldn't play it. I mean, for me, I when I was playing Endwalker, when it first came out, that was that was me four hours of waiting just to play the game. I was like, OK, it's all those bunny girls just... trying to get in there. <laughs> you laugh, but them bunny girls, they they are the reason Twitter is still around. OK, I've said this before. Any Twitter user with the handle and it has bunny in it. Stay away, my friend. Stay away. That's trouble. That is trouble. You know, it's funny you say that because there's a certain, I forget what his name. I think he's one of the brothers, the Paul brothers. Yeah. He was talking bad stuff about Bad Bunny. Which one's Bad Bunny again? I only he's know I only know the girl who killed Mike Z's career. He's a dude. Oh, I think he's a rapper, Bad Bunny. But he was like, yo, Bad Bunny's a bad person now. And I was like, huh. wow, the saga of Bunny continues. Bunnies, they're, oh, I'm telling you, if you see them in the handle... Veer away, my friend. They are bad news. Speaking of news, uh, we got one item. <laughs> so we will take a short break, and then this will probably be our only break before we wrap up the show because we got one item of news and then one item to talk about on the podcast because it's, uh, it's weird. It's like a slow week that's ramping up, but we just hit it just right where we're not quite there yet. So we'll take a short break and then we'll be right back. That'll be podcast corrections. No, it won't. We'll just talk about it later. <laughs> you don't want to do podcast corrections. Man, you hate podcast corrections. Because it's basically a, just a big old <laughs> call out section where it's like, we have hey, to we're stay bad at our job. We have to be accountable, Brogan. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. They're fun. All right. Here we are. Hey, you know how you said... I just just realized this. You know how you said you're not big on sports? During our break, you just technically called an audible. So we have... an audible is when you change the play at the line. You know, it's just a thing. But anyway, <laughs> it's... Uh, we have one news item, and you were like, you know what? How about we just take that news item and then put it at the end for Take a Flyer and Wrap Up because, you know, it's just another game that we can talk about because we have prepping for Street Fighter Six beta. So we're going we're gonna to call an audible here made by Broken Wing, the quarterback of RTO, 
at the line of scrimmage, he saw the protection. <laughs> he was like, oh, shit, they're blitzing from the A gap. No, I'm kidding. Okay, okay, I'm not going to get into it. But anyway. Honestly, uh, <laughs> that sounds amazing. And I just would love to hear an explanation to all those terms next episode of the yeah. podcast. They're playing two safeties deep. No, don't worry about it. So um, <laughs> tomorrow is the Street Fighter 6 beta, my friend. And since, you know, a third of RTO made it in, figured let's talk about it because... You know, who got... is that third? I wonder who it is. I don't know. He's somewhere. And uh, he loves fishing minigames. And I don't think he even registered for the beta, so he definitely did not make it in. Uh, so yeah, you got in, my friend. Yes! You got on, on, on Steam or PlayStation? Steam. Damn, lucky. Um, Congrats, first of all. You put this thing on Twitter. I want to start with this first. You put this thing on Twitter. It's like, man, I kind of feel bad that I got in when I see all these other people that didn't. And I was like, no, fuck that. <laughs> like, fuck those guys. Just play. What do you care? Like, who cares? That's, well, the, the reason the, the shitstorm on Twitter it was so fun to watch. Like, everybody's so salty. I didn't get a Steam code. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> well, like, the reason why I said that is because I work the weekends. So, like, mm. while everyone else doesn't work a weekend, they get all 72 hours to play the game. I may not. Hell, Saturday, I may not even get to play the game because, you know, Saturday I have a double that I, I did ask to get canceled. Yeah. I did ask for the the Saturday, uh, the double to be canceled. The so you're but sick. I would love to. So but, you have court. You know. It's like, listen, I was going 24 out of 15. I got to go to court. <laughs> It'll work. Just they're going to ask for the court favors. Nah, it's a bar job. They're not going to ask for that. <laughs> If they ask for the court papers, I might cry. <laughs> nah, you'll be fine. I'll probably just say, hey, I, something came up. I don't think you should feel bad, though. It's You You got a fair and square. It's like some pe everybody applied for the beta. Some people didn't get it, like myself. Some people got it, like yourself. It is what it is. Now, it ain't personal. I will say that... Unless you think it's personal. You think they targeted think people? I, no, I think, though, what is wrong was that somebody spoofed a bunch of accounts to get 150 copies and are selling it on eBay. Oh, scalpers. Damn. Yep, there's scalpers out there. So I think what should be happen is that they should uh they should next time attach like a I hate to say this, you should use your cell phone to like attach to your code because I know it sounds bad, but if you're if there's a closed beta Scalpers are going to come in. They're going to do this. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Well, that's unfortunate. But listen, I'm still glad that you got in to the Street Fighter 6 beta. So I, I put some details down here um, about the beta. So and then we can educate our audience who did not know about Street Fighter 6 beta. And then we'll talk about it. So this is a closed beta, October 7th to the 10th. And so limited codes obviously were sent out. Crossplay on all platforms, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, Steam, everybody can play together. We're all friends, kumbaya, game modes available, our battle hub, or rather battle hub matches, casual matches, challenges, which are updated daily, character creation, but you can only create once. DJ Booth, I know that's a fan favorite. Game Center, well, not a fan favorite, your favorite. Um... Game Center, which also updates daily. Hub Goods Shop. Open Tournaments. That's kind of sick. Photo. No, open Tournament is not. What do you mean? I got this off of the uh, thingamajig. I can, I can open up the game right now. Hmm. Well, at least it was so, supposed to. Wait a second. What, uh, I said October 7th to the 10th. It's October 6th. How are yes, you in? So, are you a hacker? No, I'm not a hacker. <laughs> Here, uh, I'll explain. I'll explain. So when you open up Street Fighter 6 closed beta, right? Mm -hmm. What happens is that you'll come up upon an option. So there, the lovely, the lovely uh, podcast, uh, well, not the lovely podcast, the lovely uh, people watching the stream will get to hear this. They will not get to see it. They'll get to hear it in the background. So what's going to happen is that first a crash report tool will create in a separate window. <laughs> Of course. Second, the game will load into the menu. 
All right. Now you keep the crash report tool active at all times. What it does is that basically when a crash happens, because we're playing on PC, it'll basically send it to the, the studio. All right. Mm -hmm. I skipped the, the initial like intro went straight to street fighter six. Okay. I'm explaining it to you guys. So that way, when it goes to the actual podcast, the you guys have a visual. listen, have a visualized explanation because there's no visuals at all. Not even the YouTube people can watch. I it. can't see. I'm still staring at Pokey feet. I'm like, what's he talking about? <laughs> exactly. So, what's going to happen is that it's going to say confirm Capcom ID. It's going to say the closed network test for Street Fighter Six. The test requires your Capcom ID, right? Mm -hmm. Please choose yes. I agree to participate in the test. Or choose, no, I don't agree to withdraw from the test. Do you agree to use Capcom ID? So what you do is you hit, no, I don't agree. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, the first time you hit, no, I don't agree, you'll get a cutscene of the Battle Hub intro with Eternity. All right? All right. So you've seen that video. Yes. Now, what you're going to see then is after that video hits, you're going to have this awesome song that I really wish OST rippers will rip which is the select the, each each of the three options you have, which is Battle Hub, World Tour, and Fighting Ground. Now, World Tour will not be available, okay? Because this is not the actual game. Right. So, sorry guys, you cannot try out World Tour mode. What you'll probably be able to play is Battle Hub and Fighting Ground. So what does Fighting Ground do? Fighting Ground is allows you to test your metal in a variety of game modes between arcade mode, training mode, offline matches, and more. These are many. There are many paths for fighters to follow in their pursuit of combat mastery. Basically, your offline mode. Right. You then have the Battle Hub, a multiplayer online space for players to gather, fight, interact, and take part in special events. The Battle Hub is the place to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you hit the options button right here yes this button you'll get to multi-menu so what does multi-menu show it shows that there's a profile a cfn and a tournament that you can access but they're kind of crossed out what i would assume is that yes you can use those but because i'm offline and not online i can't access it so tournament mode may be available but currently it is known that it's not there's also rewards, news, tips, which is really good. This is where you got all that information about, like, oh, how tournaments are done and everything. Yeah. As well as options. I've already messed with the options. So that way, instead of having this stupid 1960 by uh, 1080 little thing that's in the middle of my wallpaper, mm -hmm. I've, I've spooped it up all the way. And nice. I made it uh, so that, like, now it's the whole screen. All right. There is an option to turn off. Cro and on crossplay, but it is blank because I'm pretty sure they want you to have that on. That's at the all whole times. reason. Yeah, that's the whole reason to the beta, really. I'm trying to figure yes. this out. They're they're trying to make you break it so they can fix it. Yep. Now, I will say this. There's a lot of cool tips here. All right. So in the battle hub matches, I'm gonna go through them one by one. So that way everyone gets a, a good information. This is something that you may not know unless you watch Brian F. Or something like that, okay? So hey, shout out to Brian F. I heard he beat cancer. He did. Congrats. I'm glad for that, man. Yeah. Good so battle Brian hub F. matches. Battle hub matches. Fight against other players using fight ground fighting ground characters or spectate matches between other players. Cabinets are placed back to back, like Japanese uh, cabinets, not American cabinets, which is side by side. We have cabinets. And a match <laughs> where? <laughs> Round one. And a match, yeah, I know. And a match will begin when there are players on set on both sides. Right? Uh huh. Cool. Extreme battles. Extreme battles, like those found in fighting ground mode, can be played on these cabinets. Rules and gimmicks are changed periodically. Cabinets are placed back to back, and a match will begin when players set on both sides, which is really cool because that means that the client side will basically periodically change an extreme battle so you can't really choose what extreme battles you play but like you get like if you want to just goof around with your friend mm. it's never the same you know goof around like there's always something new you get to play there's like barrels and then there's like a volcano yeah. or whatever yeah. game center this is actually dope visit the game center to play a regularly rotating lineup of games 
Now, what the picture that they show on this is Final Fight. Mm -hmm. So yes, Final Fight is in the Battle Hub. You can play OG Final Fight. Sick. Now there's standard play. Play a game until you choose to quit. And then there's ranking challenge. Play a single player game mode to compete for the highest score. Scores will be displayed on the ranking boards in the Battle Hub. So nice. all these little arcade games that you can play during like in the game center will actually tell people who's the best at these old school games. Mm -hmm. I hope somebody puts like, you know how in old school arcade games, whenever somebody get a high score, they should put, ah, like all <laughs> I hope somebody does that. <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> now there comes the fighter profile. Mm -hmm. Fighter profile allows you to check the fight record, avatar, clubs, and achievements of a player. This comes in handy when you want to review your own track record or when you're talking with another player. Now, what's pretty sick is that the little circle that shows like what you do has a lot of stuff under it. You have World Tour, so how long you've been in World Tour. Ranked matches, how long you've been in ranked matches. Casual matches, how long you've been in casual matches. Custom room, battle hub, offline matches, arcade mode, practice, which basically is going to basically like shout out this dude doesn't go into the lab. So it tracks all that data, that all that data to. Oh, I started saying data, and then I changed it to data. I don't know how to say that word. Anyway, it tracks all that data for you while you're playing the game in like yeah, different modes. Yeah. That's crazy. And also extreme battle. So that circle will just have like a bunch of colors, and you can see how long people are in in things. Mm -hmm. CFN returns. So CFN is actually good. Do not associate before we begin. CF, do not associate CFN with the netcode. CFN is not the netcode. When you say CFN, I'm sorry, but the only thing that comes into my head is that uh, when you know that sound when the network goes down in Street Fighter Five, the damn it. <laughs> That's the <laughs> only thing that comes into my head whenever anybody says CFN. It's like, damn it. <laughs> I'll put that shit in the podcast because that's so uh, funny. That's that actually good. should be like a soundboard. Like that should be like the can't, can't do, do it. it. <laughs> yeah, it should be. So CFN is an abbreviation for Capcom's Fighters Network, which is actually sick. I wish every game had CFN mm -hmm. or iteration of CFN. What's really cool about this is that what it doesn't show, but it shows in the picture, is that it shows friends, followed, search, request, streams, Ooh. and blocked. Now, streams can be one of two things. Either one, you can put in your your like YouTube and Twitch channel and be like, hey, this is where I stream. Mm -hmm. Or two, it can be a stream of the current active gameplay that the person's playing. Nice. Which means that if like you are looking for Tokido information, right? Rather than go on his stream or go on YouTube or go on Twitch, get off the game, you can go into the game and watch him play the game itself. Damn. Is that allowed? Isn't that like there's like a privacy? I guess not privacy. I don't know. Like it sounds a little invasive. <laughs> Does it not? Kinda, kind of not really, but like that's it's actually pretty dope. I guess it's a part of like the whole Capcom agreement that you hit agree on, right? So it's true. But also, if you think about it, it kills all those uh, channel rippers that are like, oh, I went to all these people's channels, ripped all their matches and then just posted it on my own YouTube. They channel. were really bad a few years ago. I thought they've gone away, though. Like big, no. big Daddy Hende, right? No, they're still you literally they're still look up. You can literally look up any fighting game you want right now, and you can see that they're still live and proud. Man, remember Big Big Daddy, Jende, mm -hmm. Hende, whatever his name was? Xenos, or whatever his name was, too. Something with X. Yeah. Anyway, keep um, So, players, search for other players and manage your relationship with them. Follow can be done by anyone. Friends shows players who have accepted, sent friend requests, and block. Refuse matches against registered players. Can you assign a rival status to a player? I don't know yet. Maybe. Dude, Persona had that. Cool. It was so fun. You could, you could assign rivals, and you could, it would keep your all-time record against this specific person. Yeah. Guilty Gear Strive, I think, also does that, too. Mm -hmm. I think you can set someone as your rival. So, replay. Search for and watch replays of matches fought by players all around the world. 
Replays can also be saved to a list so they're easy to find for repeated viewing at a later date. Note that past replays will be rendered unviewable when the game's battle version is updated. Just like every other fighting game. Once you go from 0.5 to 0.7, 0.5 is un is unwatchable. So you're going to have to actually watch on YouTube. But Dude, that's fine. Undernight screwed me because I used to have some really fucking dope Akatsuki Unist replays and I never saved them. And then we went to Uniclear and I was like, ah, I lost all of them. This sucks. Anyway, keep going. Now, here we go. This is the cool information that everyone wants to hear about. Rank matches. All right. Leagues and ranks. So there's a little uh, diamond or not a diamond uh, triangle right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to explain how this works. So there's rookie, which is its own tier. Iron, bronze, silver, and gold. They're the second tier, right? The third tier is platinum and diamond. And the final tier is masters. All right. Okay. So leagues and ranks in ranked matches, eight different leagues are used to indicate a player's strength. With each league consisting of five ranks, you will rank up as you play ranked matches and increase your LP or league points beyond the designated thresholds. Mm -hmm. Rookie, which is the bottom, win streak bonus, yes. League point loss on defeat, no. Which means you cannot stay in rookie. That's good. Iron to gold. Win streak bonus, yes. League demotion, no. One time rank down protection, yes. So you can go down in rank, but you cannot go down in league. Okay. So there, wait, you said there's four levels to each rank? No. So there's rookie, which is uh, league one. Uh -huh. League two is iron through gold. So you got iron, bronze, silver, and gold which I believe these leagues are basically people you'll be matched up against, right? So if you're an iron, you have a chance to fight gold players. But is there like an iron one, iron two, iron three, iron four? And I then believe. I'm, I'm pretty sure there is. Because <laughs> it says league demotion is not available, right. but rank down protection is available, which basically means that there's probably iron four, iron three, iron two, iron yeah. one, bronze four, bronze three, bronze two, bronze one, right? You know what other game but, does that? It has a T in it, and it ends with an H. <laughs> There's an F in the middle. Fighting thirds. <laughs> then we go to Platinum and Diamond. Win streak bonus does not exist in Platinum to Diamond. You're kind of screwed if you're on a winning streak. League Demotion does exist, though. So you can go from Diamond to Platinum. Right. LTG is going to love that. <laughs> yep. Then we have one-time rank down protection. You still have one-time rank down protection, which is great. What does that mean? It basically means if you are on a losing streak, you don't immediately go down. Like how bad of a losing streak? Like 18 matches? I don't know. <laughs> I think one-time rank down protection basically stands for like if you have a bad day, it doesn't qu quantify you under like going down in rank because maybe you're still good. It's just that you're just having a bad day. I wonder, like, can you, I happens. wonder if you can use it manually or the set in automatically. Is it like? I think it's setting automatically because I I don't think that that I don't think the game itself would like. I think that the game will be like, okay, he's winning a lot, so we're gonna give him one time rank down to protection, and then if you get like if you lose a lot, then it'll be like, okay, calm down, and then if you lose a lot more again, then it'll it'll rank you down. Yeah, maybe it gives you like but, an alert saying, hey. You suck right now, but we're not going to demote you just yet. Yeah, maybe. Then we get to the final part of this little triangle, right? Called Masters. Now, this is very controversial because some people are like, yes, it's good. And then some people are like, this sucks. So Master, win streak bonus, no. League demotion, no. Meaning if you're in Masters, you stay in Masters. Hmm. I mean, that's cool depending on how hard it is to get to Masters. Because you don't want, like, there might be, like, a if it's not very difficult, you might have, like, a bottom league of Masters of people just getting destroyed. True, but that's the same case that as it is right now in Street Fighter V. True. Wait, you can't demote down from Masters? 
kind of, but like basically what it is is that there's a bunch of people that shouldn't be in Masters that are in Masters that they get molly whopped. But the reason why is because their rollback is so bad that like you need as many people in Masters pools as possible so that, that way like Master players don't spend 50 minutes waiting for a match. Yeah, or they can just play a different game. I don't I don't really believe in uh, no demotion, regardless of rank. If you're a Grand Master, you should still be eligible for demotion. Just because you're a Grand Master in 2022 doesn't mean when you come back to the game in 2024, you're still a Grand Master. Prove it. Exactly. That's why I think that the League demotion is kind of a controversial statement. Because some people are like, yeah, you should not go down because you're you proved yourself as a good street fighter player but then some people are like yeah but just because you're a good street fighter player doesn't mean that you should have a a safe ride you know yeah i don't know yeah that is a a little eyebrow raising indeed now here's something that they showed off on twitter battle settings visit battle settings to adjust settings pertaining to online matches Matchmaking settings. Turn on matchmaking for ranked or casual matches and search for an opponent. And battle will begin when an opponent is found. Matchmaking will remain active even if you start up an arcade training or combos trial session, allowing you to continue playing while waiting for another player to come. Dude, I love play. that feature in fighting games because obviously me being Resident Boom over here playing Persona, you are locked to just staring at the matchmaking screen when you're setting up for a ranked match in Persona or when you set up at a lobby, you just have to stare at your own little fighter ID card until somebody joins your lobby and then you can fight. Whereas like in a lot of these modern games, you can just set a lobby, go into training mode. Hey, somebody popped in. Let me go fight them. It's so nice. It's just like you don't. Really and is. Street Fighter V was super cool with that because you could get into every single match or in every single game mode while this thing is finding you matches. It was, it was actually kind of, I don't know if I want to say ahead of its time, but I remember seeing that for the first time in Street Fighter V. Uh, maybe because I didn't play certain games that did that. I think Skullgirls probably did that as well. Um, but I just remember it was like such a cool feature. So good that they're bringing it back. True. All right, we have character settings. Choose a character to choose in online matches. Titles and challenge splash screens can be customized on a per character basis. This was shown on Twitter. So whenever it shows, here comes a new challenger, right? You can change how that image looks, which is really cool. Mm. Nice. Game. Okay. Yes, game settings. Customize universal settings pertaining to stage and match selection. Basically, you're going to see a bunch of like tryhards go and put like me. I'm going to be a tryhard. That's going to put in like basically either the grid or very, very lag free or lagless stages. Yeah. Then you're going to see the casuals who don't know that that's a thing mm -hmm. just, just going to put auto fighting on the beach stage like, and fucking lagging all over the place. Oh, God, I hate those people. Rolling back. Hey, that's one thing I, you really have to report back to us is the rollback. We got to find out. Did they fix their shit? Because that's like, honestly, all it. this stuff you're talking you about is it. super nice. But like, fuck all that. Like, I just want to know if the net code has been corrected because, you know, what Pringle always says, they better come correct. And like, this is, man, you have an opportunity here to really make a splash in fighting games with this new generation. Because, listen, Guilty Gear Strive did really well. And it kind of like I think opened up the new generation in a good, in a in a good way with some momentum. And then this is up to Street Fighter to like take that momentum and keep pushing through. And then Tekken A comes out, and I'm like, holy shit! Sure you can, not sure you're gonna <laughs> Doria. <laughs> and then uh, it'll be sick. So I think they have a golden opportunity here to make an, an extremely impressive first impression. But they better yes. not. They better not mess this up. They better not screw this up. Okay. So then we have fighter profile, which is customize your profile seen by other players and adjust how many money, how much of it is available for public viewing. Speaking of money, Matt, is there fight money? Sorry to cut you off. Yes. I don't fight like money that. comes back. I don't like that. Oh, well. Can Training we talk, menu. Can we talk about characters? All this stuff is nice, but can we talk about characters? Because you have. That's, yeah, that's that's like the real shit right here. Yeah. Give me. So the characters that are available are going to be Chun Li, Guile, Jamie, June. Jury? Oh, I can't fucking read. Jury, Ken, Kimberly, Luke, Ryu. Uh, so let's say... Who I am know I going to play? Yeah, well, here's the thing. You said you're working this weekend. You might not have all the time. With the limited time you have to play the beta, out of those eight characters, so which one are you running to? Jamie, Jury, and then maybe Ken. Really? No love for mm -hmm. Kimberly, huh? I'm sorry. Kimberly is one of those, like, 
she's a cool ninja character, and I like ninja characters, but she's a setup character, and I cannot think. I don't like using my brain. Is she a, like, is she in a, a, an Ibuki replacement, you think? No, she's a guy replacement. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's Bushin, Bushin Ryu. Man. So you're going Jamie, Jury, Ken. Yep. Why Jamie? Because Jamie looks cool. And honestly, he looks like the kind of character I'd like to play. Drunken Master? Yeah. Do you play Lei? Jury... In Tekken? No, I don't play Lei in Tekken. He seems too complicated. Yeah, he is. A lot of stances. Yeah, but J- J- Jamie? Jamie is just like, unlock, go in, rush down, you know. He seems fun. Now, yeah. I would say Chun Li seemed cool, but Chun Li is a super hard character now because she's a stance character. I was like, oh. She's a stance character since when? Since Street Fighter Six. What? How many stances does she have? I don't know, but I'm not ready to find out. One for Kikosho and the other one for. What's the other one called? I don't know. Whatever. Getting bird kick. No, there's she has the other whatever. Anyway, so Ken. Eh, I guess I could see you playing Ken. Hmm. I've been a Kane. I've been a Ken player for a long ass time. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see that. Wait, you play Cammy in? Hey, wait, Cammy's yeah. not in here. Yeah, I know. I play Cammy because she's a rushdown. But I also played uh, what's his name? He's the fat guy with the. Birdie? Me? Birdie, yeah, I play Birdie. Hmm. That's cool. And of course, Jury, you know. She's Jury. I'm not I'm not horny playing. I actually played Jury in four. You know what's sad about Jury is um I actually really like her design and well really I've always liked her design, but in this game specifically, like I actually really like the way Jury looks. And Jury is definitely my type of girl where she's um, uh, you know, she steps on people. And uh that's you know. And obviously she's a very attractive, but like every time I see Jury get played, I'm just Hold like, on. man, I don't want to do any of that shit. Like it's. Hold on. Let me go pull out my mic to like say, excuse me, can you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. can you explain to me how horny you are? <laughs> Listen, but like, I just, I don't like, Jury would be sick if she played like anything the else. Like I just, I just don't like the gameplay. Like it's, eh, I don't know. It's. It really turns me off from that character, but like everything else about the character is sick. I just don't want to play her because she's. Uh. So shortcut feature: shortcuts give you access to specific functions in training mode without opening the pause menu. All right, so you can you can set up functions, but let's. Uh, Brian F showed this off, so I'm gonna go to it real quick. Wait, he already has the game. He has the beta. Man, influencers. Getting not codes. every influence, not every influencer has it. There's a lot of influencers that don't have it. Oh yeah, can we talk about that for a second? Because that's actually one of my favorite parts about the whole Street Fighter Six beta thing is like the Twitter reaction. Oh my god! So I don't like Twitter as a whole, but I really don't like FGC Twitter. But sometimes it is hilarious because the fighting game community online, they're just so salty and they're just they say the stupidest shit. But, like, I saw, who was it? Rufalmonger didn't get it? Like, uh, oh, my God, that was so fucking funny. But anyway, the, a bunch of people are, are, like, mad that influencers got codes. And I was like, yeah, why wouldn't you think Sejam would get a code? Like, he has a huge audience, like Max, like, all these people. Like, of course they're going to get codes. Like, what, are you dumb? Like, <laughs> just think rationally. Now, my, for second. Favorite, my favorite thing is that infiltration and uh, what is it? Low tier God have codes. They They're have codes. banned permanently from Capcom events. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wait, wait. Infiltration is banned from Capcom? Still? I thought he's fine now. Yeah. I think I, he's I still he's, banned. I know he's banned from Evo and like Combo Breaker. And that was some bullshit. Whatever. Let's not get into that. It's a whole other different can of worms. So there's an option in, in uh so th- what's cool is that you can actually change the battle settings for player one and player two and there's presets which means that you can actually go into a uh, so let's say you go to a tournament right Mm -hmm. rather than having to constantly change all the buttons at once per player they could just set presets for all the players 
Oh, and then all you do sick. is you select a preset. Yeah. There's also button release input. It's negative edging. You can choose to negative edge. Mm. I think For those of you who don't know what negative edging means. Yeah, that's true. You should explain way. that. Yeah, yeah. Negative edging is not a sex term. Okay? What? It is not edging. You're not edging yourself. Okay? What is negative edging? edging? I don't want to know. <laughs> I'll explain after. No, 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 uh, no. no, no. Just get, just, just, yeah, just do negative edge. So what negative edge means is that when you hold a button, so let's say I hold this button, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than just activating a move when I press the button, when I release the button, that's when things happen. That is called a negative edge. Yeah. So let's say I were to do a, uh, hold on. Example, jury, fireball, a... Street Fighter 4. Yep, let me let me use this because it's a better representation of examples. Hey, that's banned. All right. Actually, not no, that it's one. Not. The other one is. Yes. OK, so let's say. By the I way, for the like, listeners at home, Broken is holding his hitbox. So that's why I said it's banned. It's a legendary hitbox, and I will explain later. OK, so let's say I want to do a fireball. I would do this, 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 right? OK, and I'd press this button. Just, so let's yeah. say. I'm playing jury, like you said. Yes. So I do. I would do this to hold the fireball, right? Right. Now I can continue moving in any direction that I want to while holding this button. Hell, I could press these buttons right here to do attacks while I'm yeah. holding the buttons, yeah. right? And once I release this button, the fireball comes out. Yep. So basically, rather than activating a fireball whenever I press this, I can hold it basically do attacks and then basically like throw a fireball out so i basically it's 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 faster <laughs> it's better a lot of other things right basically so that uh, i think really all negative edges so for people who are listening a fireball usually is done with a two three six motion so look at your number pad on your keyboard look at two three six mm -hmm. and that's how ryu shoots his hadouken jury does 236 she lifts up her leg she says like gotcha or whatever she says and then she puts down her leg and now she has a fireball stored because she's holding on to the button that she used the fireball with so when she lets go of that button the fireball comes out can we talk about hitbox i heard cross up is getting banned is that true because that's so cd okay and remember now, i said that shit on fgc hollywood and they were shitty now, to me on twitter I will say this. What's interesting about SOCD is that SOCD has a certain thing in this game. What does that stand for, by the way? Simultaneous Opposites uh, Cardinal Directions. Okay. AKA, it means I'm pressing this button, and Left. then with this, I'm doing the other direction. Yeah. Left and right so together. Base, yep. Yes. I just showed you how I can SOCD on a controller. Yes. It was actually very difficult, mm -hmm. which is why most controller pad players don't do it. There are very, there are a few pad players that SOCD, but very few do. Okay. Now, what's cool about this is that there is a simultaneous, um, how do I go to it? Detector? There, when you're trying not, to cheat? No. God damn no. it. So there's a lot of there's this game is actually really good for blind people, by the way. There's a lot of settings you can do to set up like how much health you have left. What's happening on the screen? How much health your opponent has? Um, access other accessibility options. What is your are you getting crossed up? Are you like are you getting hit high or low? You know, huh. are you hitting high or low? There's a lot of there's like cloth volume options. Like why, what? Why would uh never mind. That's a whole, okay. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. There's a button that basically allows for so, uh simultaneous buttons pressed at the same time. So let's say I press um square instead of pressing square triangle and R1, mm -hmm. I just press square and this button and it boom, it does all three. So it helps you for EXs and supers. Yeah. By the way, Tekken does that. I don't know why nobody ever 
um, talks about that, or at least maybe I just don't hear them talk about it. But you know, there's a combo with Brian where you it's a lot easier to just do run up. So you have to use three, which is one of his kicks buttons, and then in order to run up, you need to run up with three plus four. So all you do is after you do the three button, you hold on to the three, you run up with four, and you get three plus four. So nice. a good, good way of doing it. There's also distance to opponent sound volume, hit sound volume, clothing sound volume, footsteps sound volume, regular action sound volume, attack sound volume, super arts drive sound volume, oh, battle man. HUD sound volume, environmental sound volume, environment <laughs> right. objects sound all right. volume. I think I think we got the sound volume. Uh, since you know we're talking about sound volume, I think we've kind of reach the bottom of the barrel here on Street Fighter 6. Uh, I just hope oh, yeah, the netcode is fixed. Please, yes. netcode. We'll, we will find out very soon, but there you go. There's all your information about Street Fighter 6. All your... So I, I've basically dumped the Street Fighter 6 yeah. info. Yeah, you made me go through the Undernight tutorial. So I need uh, to know, once you play it, you should let me know in Discord. Like, how does it feel? Is it mm -hmm. responsive? And if you have any uh, issues, because I wonder how many people actually got into the beta. That would be interesting. Hopefully they do a dev blog at the end of the beta and they'll tell us kind of like how Guilty Gear does their dev backyard. They're like, hey, we did this and uh, these are the results and all this stuff. So, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty cool. One thing I want to end this segment on is uh, content sharing is not only allowed but it's encouraged remember what a what a like a few months that like what what a difference that makes as far as like a few months time where they mm -hmm. put out that capcom street fighter content license thing it was terrible god and, i remember that and then they were they got all this you know terrible feedback from it they were so tone deaf with content creation and all this shit and uh now they're like, hell yeah, this is a closed beta, but you can still make content for it. So very good progress by the Capcoms. So yeah, that is all we have for prepping for Street Fighter 6. Broken, let's take a small break and then we'll come back with Take a Flyer and we shall wrap up episode 7 of this podcast. We shall be right back. That was a lot, by the way, for... Three, five, five, six. That was a lot. That was a lot. Way of... more than you expected. Who's calling me? What the fuck? It's nine fifteen. That yeah, that was way more. It's because I had the beta, so I can yeah. tell <laughs> you. Yeah, I can could... tell you what it's about. I don't know that number. Short break broken. We're right back at it. Mostly because it's uh, getting late. So anyway, take a flyer. Wrap up. We talked a lot you about used to watch for. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Let's uh, let's roll back that one because I actually want to talk about that one more so in length. It's a game called. I already forgot what it's called. But it's the called Entropy Center. The Entropy Center. It's a game I kind of want to talk about. So let's do that next week if we have time. If not, it's a game we can talk about for Later. a while. But anyway, it's coming out November third. We got time. It's October six. We have a whole month to talk about this game. Take a flyer. Wrap up. A few items here. Congrats to the Melty Bloods and the Type Moons for Melty Blood Type Lumina. Sold over 300,000. Yeah, I guess. Did they say sold over or did they shipped? I guess I didn't look at that article. 330,000. Okay. Anyway, they sold over 330,000 units, copies worldwide. Congrats. Melty Blood, no longer poverty. Good for them. Good for them. Also, and, there's a PSO2 collab. Yeah. And then they gave away a bunch of music for free, right? Yeah, they did. And also, there's a new update that just came out that gave, like, a bunch of the old school songs as, like, selectable songs. Didn't we get Not new colors, too, or something like that? New colors, too. I will say I'm sad. Yeah, every, all of this is free, by the way. I will be, I will, uh, I will say I'm kind of upset that Rhythmical Bustle AKA the song that every fucking fighting game player uses in their uh the goat their uh their songs is not selectable, but hey, the ones that are are pretty good. The audacity for you to be a fighting game player to have never played Melty Blood and then use that shit in your video. The audacity Do you know how many people do that? Oh yeah. These editors, these editors are out here wilding. 
like, hey, I love this song. Yeah, but has your the person you're editing the video for ever heard of the song? No shame. No shame. Editors, please. Please. Please, editors. Uh, Killer Instinct. Rank match was hacked. Killer Instinct. Uh, I don't know how this is even possible, but I guess somebody ho- hacked the uh, Xbox Hawk. One. Hawked, yes. Yeah, so they hawked that shit. Uh, Xbox One and Microsoft Store could not be played. Um, yeah, I'm sure how that happens, but uh, players around the KI scene, especially on Twitter, were like, hey, I can't play this stuff. And they were trying to spread awareness. And uh, hey, good on the Killer Instinct devs, because they actually got that going on. on October 4th. They were like, hey, we fixed it. And by the way, all of your leaderboards are back on there, so you're good to go. Shoutouts to KI. There's Nobody's stars were removed. Nobody's. A bunch of people were like, yeah. Worried that their stars were going to go away. Man. Yeah, only killers now play ranked mode and killer instinct. Like, you know, no pun intended, but just absolute killers. Guilty Gear. Now, Strive. Crossplay yes. beta. I will explain. So the betas will take place on October 13th through the 16th. PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 users will be able to challenge Steam users online. And it will be free to play. Now, the way it works is that if you have a PS4 or PS5, it is a separate app. Okay? Right. The separate app will not require you to use PSN Plus. You could just play it straight off the rip. Another great thing. This beta will have everything minus story mode free and available. That means all of season one and, of course, the season two character are free to play off the rip. So if you wanted to try out Testament, you know, if you wanted to try out Bridget, if you wanted to try out any of these characters. Nobody wants to try right? out those two characters. Why can you have named like Eno or like Eno is cool. available. Eno's already available. She's base roster. I'm talking about <laughs> DLC characters. Has there been so a cool wanted... DLC character yet? Uh, Gold Lewis. Eh. Where's Johnny? Where's Slayer? Season two. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, back on point. So, again, if you're a Steam player, this will also be a separate app. So, again, if you play Guilty Gear Strive and you want to try out DLC characters, boom. Off the rip, you will be able to play it. So then you'll be able to determine whether or not you really wanted to buy that character or not. Two, another great thing. This is free for anyone. If you have friends who are like, I want to play fighting games, but I don't know which one to play. Literally sell them this one. It's got great rollback. It's got a great community. And mm. games games kind of fun. I don't know about that second one. But uh, I don't know about that third one either. But like, hey, it's free. So why not? What are you losing? Right. What are you losing? Yeah. And the rollback is amazing. I haven't played Strive in forever, but is it still a thing where you accidentally try to rematch somebody and you hit their R code and now you just got to hold that L for like a while? <laughs> is that still a thing? <laughs> it's not forever, but it's still a thing. Yeah. It's not, just, you, it's not three months that you have to wait for them to man. leave R code. <laughs> oh, man. That was pretty funny. But, but yes. That is a lot of stuff that will be done. All game modes will be included. So, yes, training mode will be accessible during this time. Yeah. So. October 13th to October 16th. So mark your calendar for a free beta. Cool. You know what's... uh, I was just thinking about this just randomly. Isn't isn't it kind of still kind of a slap in the face to a lot of these developers doing all these innovative stuff like crossplay and Battle Hub and all this other, you know, just... All this stuff. Meanwhile, Tekken has like hasn't done shit in like forever, and they have like six thousand players every goddamn day playing <laughs> Akuma or whatever. <laughs> I will say this: Harada has explained this. He says that he always took Virtual Fighter BS. Virtual Fighter was the innovator, and he would just be like, "Oh, cool! Virtual Fighter did something cool. I'm gonna take that." Now that Virtual Fighter was gone for the radar, he was like, "Oh, I have to be the innovator now." That's why he's excited that Virtual Fighter's back because he's like, oh shit, now I can just steal their shit again. They, they mailed it in the last uh, last couple seasons, in my opinion, with Tekken 7. I mean, they, they're they like, oh, Netcode sucks? Whatever. You'll play it anyway. Oh, you don't like the balance? Whatever. You'll play it anyway. And he hasn't been proven wrong. They're playing that hey. game more than any other fighting game 
on the market with all everybody has their bells and whistles and everything. No, we're playing Tekken. Well, the reason why is because 3D fighting games are different than 2D fighting games. And to be fair, there's a dime a dozen 2D fighting games. Well, how many 3D fighting games are currently available that people play? Yeah. Tekken and Soul what, Cow. Tekken? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. So, okay, nobody's playing DOA 6. That's been, uh, they stopped supporting that game. So. And Virtual Fighter is not that played often, but hey, it's back. It's, yeah, it's it. only on PlayStation, whatever, live. What is it called? Uh, PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Uh, broken, I added this game because this is such a just broken game. It's called Romansylvania, a darkly comic genre mashup combining side scrolling action and tug in cheek romance into one completely absurd and unforgivable unforgettable adventure maybe unforgivable too uh added this yeah. game i added this game specifically because this is such a broken wing type game looks a little kuso in my opinion and for the uninformed kuso means uh garbage or, or trash um kusoge but uh, it could be all right. I just, from seeing the trailer, I was like, ah, oh, man, this, it looks a little rough to play, but the theme of it, I think you would like. Romansylvania. I will say this. Kusoge games are amazing. Sometimes. Solely because. Sometimes. Because Kusoge games are those games where it's like, this game's fucking garbage. Yeah. And then you pick up your controller to play it again. When, when they're so trash that it's actually comical, that's when it's it's actually fun but when they're like just trash enough where like it gets away from being the game that it could be you're like ah this sucks it's like if only it wasn't like this and that's when it's you know it's like, it gets it gets annoying oh hey mario the movie trailer so you asked me to watch this because uh you know are the mario movies coming out I came into it and I was just like, I don't care about this shit. And then I watched the trailer. I was like, you know what? That was actually pretty good. <laughs> like, I might watch this because the beginning, I was like, damn, the way Bowser came in, I was like, that was actually kind of cold. Like the way he's like, open the gates or whatever. I was like, that's kind of sick. And then all of a sudden I was like, hey, I know these voices. Jack Black is Bowser. And then I was like, oh, shit, I know this voice. And then you were saying, oh, uh, what's his name? Wait, who's Chris, Chris Pratt? I already forgot. God damn it. Chris Pratt's Mario. Yeah, he's Mario. But Bowser is Jack Black, and uh, Charlie Day is Toad. He's Luigi. No, Luigi. Luigi. He's Luigi? Charlie Are you sure? Yeah. Charlie Day is Luigi, and then Toad is actually... Uh, it's uh, Key from Key and Peele. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta say, I, I really came into that trailer with really low expectations, and I was like, that was... That wasn't bad. That was like that was all right. That was pretty good. I might watch this movie. Broken. I don't know. I might just do it. Maybe, uh, I don't know if he is in it or not. But Lance Riddick sounded like he was the Penguin. He is uh, mostly known for in John Wick as the uh, what's his name the uh, the guy who tells John Wick like in the apartments. He's the hotel manager. Okay. He's also um, mostly known as Zavala from Destiny. He's also known as uh, the ma the guy who literally carried the Resident Evil season, terrible season show. He's a he's a guy. Well he's a guy who does stuff, and so are we. But the stuff that we do is on this airship. And guess what? Broken. This airship is at Orbis. So we have arrived, my friend. Another podcast has been completed. And again, another one. We just talked about fighting games all day. Like, man, is this really just FCC Hollywood? Just, uh, you know, coded in black and gold. We didn't just talk about fighting games. We yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I literally I literally spent like a, at least 30 minutes talking about Potion Permit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that is all we have for Ride to Orbis, a gaming podcast. Fighting games are part of games. And uh, yeah, we shall be back. Brogan's going to have, he's going to be our scout for the Street Fighter VI beta, as well as the crossplay beta, as well as probably some other beta that has not yet been announced. And uh, yep. on episode eight, you will have to tell us all about it, as well as maybe we'll talk about the Entropy Center and 
Who knows? Maybe we'll get a wild Pringle joining us. No, probably not. But who knows? The week. Mayhaps. One of these days. Hey, it could be a blue moon. You never know. But anyway, my name is Max Spicer, the man in the hat. That is Broken Wing, a.k.a. Pringle the Two, the man in the second seat slash third seat, depending on where the boxes are. <laughs> and then uh, we will be back. Technically the first seat. Yeah, technically. Correct. We'll be back next week. Shout outs to the D-Gen Ranger. Shout outs to Discord. Shout outs to Patreon. Hey, if you're listening to this on Monday, go check out the archive. RTO versus CNC, Tekken 7. It'll be fun. Anyway, peace out, y'all.